My name is Eud, uh, and I'm the technical lead for Clarity at VMware. Um, so today I'm going to talk about content projection. So if you've ever tried to write a reusable component, uh, whether it's for your own application just inside of your app or as a part of a library, uh, you probably had to project content. And it's the targeted projection. So ng-content offers a select attribute. Uh, it can take any CSS selector. So here I'm using an element selector for my sheep. Uh, it could be a class selector with dot something, or it could be an attribute selector with brackets, uh, anything you want. So we have our targeted ng-content with the select. And then outside of the fence, we have a catch-all ng-content. So the sheep will go inside of the fence, and anything else will go outside. So let's say we have a particularly facetious user, and they try to sneak in an elephant next to the sheep. Uh, luckily, with that ng-content select, the sheep are inside of the fence, and the elephants stay outside. What's happening here is that ng-content doesn't produce any content. It just moves existing one from one place to another. Think of it like a pen child on HTML DOM nodes or jQuery.append, which is also very popular. It just moves an element from one place to another, and if you chain a pen child, well, only the last parent will actually get the elements. The previous one would just get it for a second, and then it will move on to the next one. In, in the case of our several ng-contents, the first one would get the, the sheep. It would match on every single one of them, but only the last ng-content would get the sheep. So why does Angular do this? The actual main reason, before anything else, is that you have consistent expectations. Blueprints in Angular are called template refs. Uh, template ref is basically you put an ng-template element around something, and that something becomes a blueprint. You can use it to reproduce that content as many times as you want. On the application side, you just put your pasture, you put your sheep inside with that structural directive. So technically what you're giving here to the farm, they're farms now, not pastures, because you're breeding sheep, obviously. The farm, the, the, what you're giving here is not an actual sheep, it's a model of how to create sheep. And now, in the farm template, instead of having three inch contents, we use three ng-template outlets, which is just the directive that Angular provides to easily stamp out a template ref. There are other ways, other APIs, using TypeScript services from, from Angular, uh, but that's the most straightforward and easy way to use it. And when we do that, we get our sheep, one, two, three. We only pass one as part of the app, and we get three displayed at the end. So we did just like before. We have our barn, we have our outside, and instead of having two ng-contents with ng-if, we have two ng-template outlets with ng-if. We saw that earlier, right? Exactly the same thing. And so what now happens is, during the day, outside is tamped by the second template outlet. Then night comes, and the second outlet, template outlet dis disappears, but the first one just gets the template ref and puts it inside of the barn. So now they're correctly inside of the barn. That's it. Thank you for listening, and I promise I didn't destroy any sheep during the making of this presentation.